river run, run through the hills, run river run to the sea, run river run to your place beneath the sun, run river run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to Be My Guest. And today, for all of you who done it lovers, we he's back. Glenn Hickler is back with his latest Who Done It, a Mitch and Al mystery, a stain on Utopia. And you're probably thinking, what the heck is this all about? Well, those of us who live in Upton and all the nearby towns know of the town Hopedale, which is right next to us here. If you're from out of town, out of the country watching this, Hopedale is another little burg, not far from Worcester, but kind of in the middle, middle part of um, Massachusetts. And Glenn is a resident of Hopedale and for years, he calls me the nag, for years I said, why don't you write a whodunit in Hopedale? And you know what? He did it. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> he is, a, oh my god, this book, the humor just gets more and more with your books. That's where you get me. Mm. Oh, first of all, without giving away the ending, because we've got a whole bunch of other stuff, brief them as to what it's about. What it's about? Yeah, just just well, briefly. Well, it's it, it's about a uh, the University of Minnesota. You know, I'm, my my two uh, main characters work for a paper in St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, they get word from the wife of the uh, professor at the University of Minnesota, who is in Hopedale researching. Um, good old Aidan Ballou, who founded the town as a utopian community, and the professor is missing. He hasn't uh, communicated with his wife for several days. She's called the police. They're trying to find out uh, where he might be. And he, uh, a young uh, woman, a uh, graduate student who was working with him, he was her mentor. Uh, she has also disappeared. And uh, so they are uh, my two heroes, uh, the reporter Mitch Mitchell and the photographer Alan Jeffrey are sent to Hopedale to see if they can cover the story right on the spot. And that's where it starts, landing in Boston and being told to take the mass pipe, oh. <laughs> and which they've never heard of. Uh, Mitch actually asks, is that some kind of a fish? A fish. But, uh, <laughs> he's told that, that it's the biggest, most famous highway in America by the guy at Logan Airport. So anyway, they're on their way to Hopedale, and they do find the town that they so far haven't found the professor. Well, the thing too is uh, Mitch and Al are not from around here, and uh, they're driving along the Mass Pike, and they see that sticker like, use your blinker, which we all know is New England, <laughs> it's the <laughs> accent. And was it, one of them said, is that like a pig Latin or a pigeon or something? <laughs> they didn't really know. Yeah. This is cool. Glenn, you were in the Navy, right? I was. <laughs> First chapter, Utopia Bound. They're leaving Minnesota, and they're heading out for Hopedale, well, Boston, and then Hopedale. As a flyer in the Navy, that the definition of a good landing is any landing that you can walk away from. <laughs> I love that because I will fly. <laughs> I will not get in a... I don't think there's any amount of money who get me on a plane. <laughs> uh, Dean Martin. Did you know Dean Martin had a phobia about flying? He called it the same thing I do, a flying coffin. <laughs> Which you're in one all the time. I don't know where you get your bravery. Oh. And then you take the boat to Martha's Vineyard. Right. And you don't get a little... Uh, no. Doesn't bother me a bit. Damn! I like to put the <laughs> secret in. I mean, we had some flights over the Pacific that were no. nobody ever got sick. This, yeah, this prominent Minnesota professor, Dr. Kinchus Butts, <laughs> <laughs> leave it to Glenn to think of that, who had vanished while researching the history of a progressive 19th century minister, Aidan Ballou, in Hopedale, and he pictured it as a utopia. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> now, where did I put this now? <clears throat> he founded the Utopian City in uh, of Hopedale, town, I shouldn't say city, gosh, no way. <laughs> All right, um, <clears throat> when you get to the police station, when Al and Mitch get to the police station, yeah. <clears throat> they're greeted by 
the I think it's the officer who sits at the front yeah, desk. Yeah, it's the duty, <laughs> the duty on the duty desk. For and the chief is a lady. What's her last name? I can't think of her last name. And then who's the fellow? Is it the... Uh, is it the detective who comes out with a bow tie, a different one? Every yes, the detective wears a different bow tie every day. Yeah, and you loved that you and Al had to stay in, uh, which motel was that? Oh, Best Western, I don't know. And yeah. they had a lovely, quote, continental breakfast. Yeah, I know what that means. Yeah. That, that, that's not, you know, an egg and, you know, <laughs> what is it, you just get a donut and coffee? Yeah, and they say it's free, like maybe it wasn't included in the price of the... Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> what do you do when you have kids? You've got to have more than that. Yeah, you I go mean, to IHOP. <laughs> anybody knows that. Well, they get away with a lot. Anyway, so, this picture on the front, Glenn took himself. And it is Aiden Ballou, right? Uh, that's Aiden Ballou in, in, in the park right in the center of Hopedale. Right in the center. Yeah. Now, you also go every year, you go to the um, Hopedale Day in the park. Yes. And you said you're usually over at the tennis courts near there. Yeah, near the tennis court. I have my back to the yeah. tennis court. And you do a really, you do well. I did very well this last I, I've been in two different spots. If I'm outside on the sidewalk, I didn't do very well. But yeah. inside the park, for some reason, I get twice as many sales. You know, you'd think people walking along the sidewalk. But no, they're inside. They want to no, be inside. No, they're inside, yeah. I was going to go. I paid my money and then, well, it's still a little too close to COVID. And I thought the main bathroom was a uh, porta potty no. <laughs> would be, what would that be, a germ type of thing? <laughs> I said, no. Glenn, t Glenn told me, no, they have a little red house. Yeah, it's a regular town facility. Yeah. But how do you leave your table? You leave a note on it? I mean, anybody could take a book, right? How do you do that unless you have a partner with you or something? I just... Trust. <laughs> Trust. <laughs> no, but, you know, the, your, your wrist, there's boots on both <laughs> sides of me. I, I hide the money box under the table, and then yeah. the people next to me watch for All right, this yeah, is what I would do. Then, then, he'll then, be then, back in 10 minutes or five minutes. And, uh, so it only you takes know. you five minutes? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> not true with big ass girls. It's not that far. No, no, no. <laughs> But I wouldn't use the money box under, hidden underneath there. That's too easy for them. What I would do is I would all the money, and I would stash it in my purse, and that purse goes with. Well, I don't me. have a purse. Well, many have to. Sorry look. about that. <laughs> well, how about a backpack? Well, I can, uh, uh, too much trouble. No, That's, guys know, have it's, those fanny it's packs. Bad enough sitting there and standing there all day. Well, having a backpack. No, just when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> but you have the oh. fanny packs. People have fanny packs, right? What's that? Guys too. They're the fanny packs for hikers. Oh, yeah. Now let's. This get back to the story. The professor pinches butts. He uh, he went. He goes hiking up to the parklands. Parklands. Well, yeah. I didn't even know that existed. What is that? It's a, it's a very sizable park. Uh, the the um, the little the river goes goes through it. With all the little ducks and the yeah. geese. Yeah, yeah. And there's an entrance. There's an entrance on Hopedale Street. Yeah. And there's another entrance that's on a road that connects hopedale to uh, the road that goes to minden whatever that is yeah route 16 i'll bet and there's a couple yeah in fact there's a couple entrances up up there there's one uh at a flat part and the other one that that's also in the book as it leads to you go up a very yeah, steep hill and that's it park it's a trail right yeah there's a trail it's wide enough to drive i've seen a cop car driving in there <laughs> well, that's what happens in the story. So Mr. <laughs> yeah. Pinch's Butts, yeah. he comes all the way from Minnesota to do research about Aidan Ballou, that, mm. the famous founder in uh, Hopedale. And he goes up on it, and who? I'm trying to think, there was, was he up there alone? Who was with him that day when he got murdered? <laughs> <laughs> and he was alone, well, he was up there, yeah, he was with the, um, the, uh, the senator, state senator, who was running for... Uh, he went with him that day? Mm, no, 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 actually he was up there alone. The state senator okay. was waiting. Met him up there. Okay, I thought it was that girl that they were all looking at her. She took off the same day he died. He yeah, said, she yeah. disappeared the same day. But it wasn't her. No, she went off to get married in a whole in Vegas yeah. or Reno or something <laughs> like that. So it wasn't her. No. And I was telling Glenn oh. earlier, I suspect that. <clears throat> that was, what do you think? I mean, don't tell me. What? I've got this much more to go. <laughs> 
I don't know. I'm still thinking that it, it, it is that politician. There's something. Don't you dare tell me. I'm not going to tell like you. It's like a politician or maybe... It's usually with Glenn, it's who you would never suspect. The politician mm -hmm. or the uh, stalker or the team guy at the high school. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't like Pinch's Butts because Pinch's Butts was kind of flirting with his wife or girlfriend. 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 Yeah. And he went and had a little talk with the professor. Mm -hmm. But Mitch says... What did he say? He was saying, uh, oh, his wife, back in Minnesota, Mitch's wife, there's a stalker. And he misses her. He's like, oh, geez, I can't go back and help protect my wife. And it's killing him. You know, he just yeah. wants to get back. I have yet to figure this out with that stalker. It's, the only thing I can think of is it must be, maybe it's connected. But what has she got to do with the missing professor? That, where, where do you come up with this? It, does it just come to you, Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> Comes sort of out of the blue, you know. <laughs> did you took the key? I mean, I start with a basic idea, and then things happen. And as you're writing, things happen. People come in, and say things you didn't expect. You know, <laughs> the sense of humor, Glenn's yeah. sense of humor, is mm. throughout this book. Even it might be, I might even venture to say it's even more than I've ever seen. There was the other book I liked so much too. It was um, <laughs> he and Al end up at the. Uh, a beach on Martha's Vineyard, and they didn't know it was a uh, nudist beach. Oh, yeah. And they <laughs> supposed to see a lawyer there, and mm. the lawyer, well, <laughs> let's just say he had no clothes. Okay. <laughs> they, they look at it, uh, you get, you seem to start right from the beginning, and that's why you get people, mm. right from the beginning, mm. with the direct, the humor, and almost everything they go through. Mm. <laughs> it is, I mean, now where am I? I am up to the point. Let me see. All right, I'm not going to go with it. The high school guy, the high school coach. Yeah. He, he's, he's figured that the what the detective let him hook up with him and find out. Right. What was the hardest part in the book to write? Was what it, was what? What was the hardest? The, and the hardest easiest? part? Yeah. Mm, if there was. I guess it was f figuring out how to get get the. Uh, the eventual killer into the same place at the same time as, as yeah. the victim. Well, they found what was a professor's yeah. favorite candy bar. The wrapper, yes. Yeah, I never even heard of it. They found that there. Yeah. And so that was used as evidence, but also there was a coffee cup, but that wasn't his. That wasn't, but they mistakenly thought it was. Okay, don't tell me, but I have a feeling that might have something to do with who was there. I mean, the professor couldn't just stab himself and then die and go off near the bay. <laughs> no, that was yeah, cool. it was cold. He was wearing a lot of clothes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Whoever and did it had to have a pretty good arm. <laughs> We're talking with Glenn Eckler. He's back, and his latest book is A Stain on Utopia. This is based on the true history of Hopedale, Mass., which is we in Upton. It's right up the street. Um, you can find it on a map. It does exist. It's a yeah. cute little town. Really cute. Glenn, how can they get a hold of you and your book? Well, you could uh, come to my, my next signing, for one thing. Signing? Uh, I'm signing. I'm signing at Tatnock uh, Books Cellar in Westboro on the Saturday, April 18th from 1 to 3 p.m. Not April, hon. Huh? Not April. February. Not April. February, I'm sorry. <laughs> February. That's okay. Just 12 days from today. Yeah. He's going to be up at Tatnuk. Yeah, I'll be at Tatnuk. Now, are you at the, there's, there's, you, yeah, you're going to be at the 1 to 3 p.m. one. Yeah. And then there's the right. one that's 3 to 5 or 6. Are yeah. you going to be in the big boys' room? Are you going to stay out there near the... I'll be out in the main, you're main gonna be part. You're going to be out there. Yeah. Okay. All right. The big boys' room is for if you're doing a reading to a big crowd. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> are you going to be at the uh, library, the Bancroft in Hopedale? Um, I don't know. They've got their schedule set for two years ahead. So it is? Yeah. I will be at Day in the Park again next, uh, what is it, September. Yeah, in September. Um, Maybe I should put in another word for you at the Hopedale Library. Yeah. Like say, full! 
Get him on there. He lives in your town. Well, I'm gonna. That's where I think. I'm gonna goes. spring it on them, but uh, I don't yeah. know. They're, they've they've got their schedules all. So How about Milford? 2024. Menden, I bet you Menden would be very Maybe open Milford, to this. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I've been to productions, uh, presentations there. Then there's yeah. Milford. Yeah. See who else? Of course, Whitensville. Now, when we in Hopton move, our new library will be opening to the public May 1st. Mm -hmm. The official rah rah and the ribbon cutting will be June 14th. Mm. But as far as we know, knock on wood, it's going to be open. Oh. On the first, it'll be both the library, the, it's called the community center, the senior center, and there'll be the little playground right behind it. Yeah. We've been watching that thing go up, what's it, Paul, two years, one year? It's been good, mm. one year. Yeah. Fast. Went up fast. Yes, I can't wait to yeah. get in. You know there'll be a presentation room, like a, mm. there you are. Yeah. We don't have one here, but we will over there. Now. Where have you been appearing besides your coming up on the 18th of February at Tatna? Where have you yeah. been? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can uh, buy my book online on Amazon or at. Uh, you know. Have you been anywhere else? I Did have you? not been anywhere else, no. No. Not, not yet. Li not lately. Uh, when did you leave Martha's Vineyard? When did I leave? Well, Martha's yeah, when you leave for the season. When did you leave? Leave the vineyard in the fall, oh, right? Yeah, I leave the vineyard in the fall. I'll be selling on my front porch on uh, Illumination Night in August. And you have a book called Illumination, what was it? Illumination something, Illuminating... Lanterns of Death. Lanterns of Death. And it's based on truth. Yeah. It's every, what, summer? Yeah. You have your cottage and the other cottages and then they light up their porches. That's right. One, one, one grand night when everybody lights up. For, it's like a yard sale. It's been going on for 150 years. You're kidding. Yeah. I would love that. It's, it's also you could have like a little mini yard sale on your porch. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do well, right? I sit on my porch and sell $500 worth of books. <laughs> this hadn't come out yet, though, this summer. <laughs> this, this just came out in December. Yeah, because when yeah, I got so this in the mail, I'm it, like, yes! <laughs> well, I'll have that on my porch this summer. i got to read you something. Yeah. I was telling Glenn, when I first opened this book, I thought, oh, it's here! And I read, he usually signs it, and it says, at first I'm like, what the heck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> he goes, to jam the matter. <laughs> Merry Christmas and a utopian new year. <laughs> okay. And a couple of days went by and I was studying it more and I got to the dedication page. He he saved himself. <laughs> to Jan, who has nagged me for years on her TV interview show to bring Mitch and Al to Hopedale for an adventure in the town in which I live. May her hopes for its success come true. Oh yeah, you hit this thing right. <laughs> you really did. You even had Mitch and Al going into the Hope Deal. See, I, the library, I can picture all of these places because we live around here. Yeah. Excellent job. There's the town library, um, the little red house. I think the lady, is her name Victoria in the little red house? Yeah. 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 The th historian. The and red then, shop, the little red shop. Yeah, red the little shop. Red, the uh, shop. What yeah. is in that little shop? It's, uh, it, it's actually the place where the drapers began, you know, the drapers who had that huge oh. four block long brick yeah. thing they started in the little red shop. Yeah. Uh, their manufacturing thing and expanded from there. It and it's started a, in it's a museum now. It has, it has uh, actually has uh, w one of their their most popular looms with a uh, a mannequin sitting there yeah. uh, working it in and then some old records, papers, pictures. From so that it. little red house it, in Hopedale was the starting of Draper. Yes. In that little, they couldn't have had many employees. What's that? They couldn't have had many employees at first. No, know. no. They started uh, basically two Draper brothers and then expanded from there. One of the funniest things in this, this story is staying on Utopia, Mitch and Al. Mitch is the reporter and Al is the photographer for the newspaper in Minnesota. Is the two of them have, they, they <laughs> the first time they get there, uh, the room that they're staying in, in Milford, Stay, I guess it's Milford, yes. I don't know, but overnight. Yeah. And then their uh, editor from Minnesota says, that's it, I got your book back on a plane. 
So they pack up their stuff. Next thing you know, no, something else has come up in the in the. Okay. So no, you're going to be there again. So they unpack and they get they got the same room. <laughs> what are the odds of that? And then they're unpacking. <clears throat> next thing you know, I've got you on the next plane. Pack up again. I I don't know where this is going to end, but these two, they get along really well. <laughs> It, yeah, I, I always pitch Glenn though as Mitch, but it's I, I don't know because of the sense of humor and the way he speaks. <laughs> Al is a good. Uh, would you say Al is a straight man in this story? The straight man, the one that kind of yeah, they both they both like to crack a few puns. There's no oh, yeah. question about that. Well, you you have two sons. I have four. Where are the other two come from? <laughs> I thought you had two. I have four. Four sons. Their names are Warren, Alan, Mitchell, and Jeff. Four sons. Grandchildren. Six. How old are they? Um, the oldest one's 40. How old? Four, zero. <laughs> How old were their parents? Ten? Were they four? <laughs> My yet. oldest son turned 65 this uh, last December. That's a millennial. Uh, no, no, no. That's a baby boomer. Hmm? What's the next age of down coming down? What's the what? What's the age of the next child coming down from the 65-year-old? 63. Yeah, another boom, uh, boomer. And then 61 and 60. All four of your sons are baby boomers. Yeah. <laughs> you went, yeah. <laughs> what did you think of my generation yeah, okay. with Woodstock? What did you think? Did you and your wife just kind of get a giggle out of it, out of the boomer generation? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, we... <laughs> yeah. Oh. When you're raising four boys, you don't care what generation it is. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they stay out of trouble. Right? As long as they stay out of jail. <laughs> oh, did you have to go through that? <laughs> you didn't. You didn't have to have that, did you? We had, we had one of them picked up for stealing cigarettes. Okay. Or he was with the kid who stole cigarettes. Oh. And we let him sit there for a few hours before we picked him up. <laughs> exactly. That's called detached with love. Yeah. <laughs> let them hit their own bottom. Because <laughs> yeah. if you keep picking them up, they're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, that's right. We're talking with Gil Glenn Ickler, our resident. Uh, we got it. His latest mystery is A Stain on Utopia. It's a Mitch and Al mystery based on the true story of Hopedale, Mass. And uh, Aiden Ballou, who founded the Utopian part. What What happened to Aiden Ballou? He went broke. <laughs> How did he go broke, though? Well, his little community basically fell apart. Yeah. And eventually, you know, it, it was part of Milford. Yeah. And then it, I'm not exactly clear on how it became part of the Hopedale, but the, yeah. the people drifted away and, and his, his uh, religious thing fell apart and he had no source of income. <laughs> Did he die at an early age? What we would say. Mm, I think he was in the he was middle sixties. I think that's yeah. well. That's like you don't see yeah, much that, of that nowadays. You know, at that time that was fairly old. For, you know, it was a yeah. reasonable. Yeah, for, definitely. You know, when you go yeah. through Hopedale, you yeah. it's adorable. You have the little post office. Uh, they got the library. Uh, then there's a beautiful big Unitarian church. You know that big yeah. Unitarian church, on, and then there's a Catholic church up Route 16. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, there's a, was a Cumberland Farms is down at the corner. Right? <laughs> Cumberland Farms is the biggest store in town. <laughs> <laughs> they have, I'm not going to say where it is, but you live in a beautiful condo area. Yeah. And it has its own post office. Yeah. But what is the HOA now? What is what? The HOA, the monthly uh, pound of flesh. What is that now over where you are? Oh, it's high, isn't it? It's $425. <laughs> You gotta get a roommate or a boarder <laughs> just to pay that. People can sell their house right and afford to get a, a condo there. They're beautiful. Yeah. But then you're looking at yeah. like four hundred a month. Whatever happened to your utility bills and all these other things? I guess yeah. you could just refurbish the basement as a renter. <laughs> yeah. But you know they replace your roof when it needs to be replaced. Yeah. They plow your snow. Yeah. Um, they cut your grass, they prune your bushes, 
I'll yeah. trim my bushes. I can trim my bushes. Yeah, well, I could do that too. Yeah, and you don't have big lawns, you guys. <laughs> What, there's, what's there to really trim that much? Of? <laughs> Do you don't now. There's a pod behind there, so you don't overlook that. Yeah. You're up closer to the main entrance, I think. Mm, well, I, I'm fairly well up. Up, I'm up the hill part way. Why did they have a, a a post office just for that? Well, there's 227 units there. Yeah. And so That's, it saves. Yeah. 227 trips a day into the main <laughs> post office. <laughs> well, you, do you and walk to your... They do it in one, and I, mean, can, I can walk to my mailbox, which is... <laughs> well, you must walk over there, right? Do oh, you, yeah. Do they give you the little... I call it being called to the principal's office at our Upton one. It's a little yellow slip like we got something here for you. Yes, they have some bigger box. If you get a big package that won't fit in your box, they yeah. have some bigger box, and they'll put a key in your in your little box, and you go. And so what do you do with that key when you're done? It sticks in the lock. You, once you put it in that lock, you can't get it out. <laughs> okay, so nobody could have gone in there. Only the postmaster or the post the, the postal man can get that key out once you. That way they don't lose any keys, otherwise they'd be long gone, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> don't bite your package. <laughs> yeah, and you'd never get your package. you got to catch Glenn Ickler. we just got a few minutes left. He's going to be at Tatnock, yes, on February 18th from 1 to 3. And you can see him here. Here's his poster. We'll put it up downstairs in the Upton Library if you want to see it close up and personal. It's right here. And uh, you're going to be up front. You're gonna. You've chosen to sit up front. He'll be yeah. up front there. Yeah. And um, let me see. I know there's a one to three, and then there's a three to something. But that's. Have you been up? Oh, <clears throat> have you been up yet to the Book Lovers Gourmet? I know Deb Horan. She's the owner. Very much into. It's a bookstore with new books. Use everything right up in Webster. Where right, is this? Right off of Route 16 in Webster. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna give you the information. Oh, and. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been up there. She is very into authors' presentations. Oh. Very much. I've sent many authors up to her. Mm. And you can have fun looking at some of the, Even artists display their work. Mm. It's a cozy shop. Mm. And um, I think they even have some snacks, maybe coffee. They have a book group. Okay, I, got, I could have sworn I got you in touch with her years ago, but well, I'm going to let you know. Oh, yeah. I think you'll really enjoy that. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, it's not far. You just get... Well, you know where Central Turnpike is in Northbridge? Yeah. Central, it heads up into Sutton, goes up the hill, yeah. it's over 146. Yeah. Take that up, Joe Jenny Road, that connects to 16, straight up. Yeah. Or you could go 16 from Uxbridge, whichever you want yeah, to do. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, I think you'd have a blast. Station. Definitely. I'm going to um, let her know, and I'm also going to send you an email about all of her information. Mm. It'd be great to have him up there, too. Mm. Can't just keep you down here to ourselves. We've got to get you up there. <laughs> Glenn, do I dare ask if there's another one coming? There is. Ah! Yes. <laughs> no. It's about, I'm almost halfway through it. <laughs> it hasn't even been, what, half a year yet, and you're already all halfway well, through I've it? Oh, I've been going like crazy. Well, no, I, actually, I haven't been. I try to do, originally I was doing five pages a day, and I, I've got to the point now where I get, on this one I can't quite squeeze out more than three. It's okay. And then I've been doing a backtracking a lot because I realized I've got to set this up. Give us a hint. <laughs> Just a hint when it's about. Here's it. They, Mitch's mother wins a free river cruise in Port Portugal. Oh, gee. <laughs> and she can take one person with her, so she takes Mitch. And, of course... They don't want to go alone, so Al and his wife, Carol, come along. Of course. And they bring Mitch's cat, Sherlock Holmes, as his mother's uh, travel, you know, yeah. comfort, comfort creature. Comfort cat, yeah. And but do you have a cat at home? I have. Well, I haven't had a cat. We, we had cats. Had. When we had kids, we had cats. But once we got rid of the kids, we got rid of the cats, too. <laughs> You don't even have a guinea pig or a fish? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <That's wrong. laughs> 
<laughs> We're going to have to close. But I have a couple of potted plants. <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch out. They can get yeah. crabby. <laughs> they don't eat much. No. You don't have to clean up after them. No, you really don't. Glenn, before we close, we got about a minute. How again can they get a hold of you in your book? Yeah. How again, how can they get a hold of you in your book? How can what? How can they get a hold of you and your book? Oh, they can go on my website at uh, glennickler.net. <laughs> um, they can email me at uh, glennwriter at uh, verizon.net. And you're pretty open as to where you could appear, right? People yeah. want you to come. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we get him out there somewhat. So. Like, you're busy enough, my God, with all the things you're doing. Oh, I'm trying. <laughs> okay, I know. I'm getting the high sign from Paul. We got to. He'll be back. Don't worry about it. He'll yeah. be back. Thanks for being with us again. Okay. We'll see you on next time and be my guest. Riding on a shooting star. Heading out toward a dream. Tomorrow's even closer than it seems.